Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and welcome back to the channel and we are here. It is finally upon us once again. The third year in a row I've done this. Three years in a row now I've done predictions for this and I'm excited as hell for this year's Mania. Three years in a row I've, I've done Mania now and I'm, I'm excited as hell. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, Mania is looking like it's going to be fantastic. I still have yet to watch. At, at time of recording, at time of recording, I have yet to watch TakeOver New York. Okay? Just going to say it right now. I have yet to watch TakeOver New York. It's not, it's not because I don't want to watch it. It's because I was tired as hell last night because I got home from work after sleeping maybe 30 minutes before work. I, I got like 30, 40 minutes of sleep. Got home. Went straight to bed, basically. No, I played video games for a little bit, and then went to bed. Uh, woke up at like 6 this morning, 6.30ish, and uh, I've been doing a lot of recording. So I'm doing the main predictions. I'm going to go up, watch TakeOver. The review for that should be out tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's get right into the main predictions. Now, for those of you who don't know, for the Big Four pay-per-view, I do also get predictions from Jesse, my uncle, the guy I did the A Way Out playthrough with. Um, so his predictions will also be on, on this video and... Unlike what I, because I forgot to do it with uh, TakeOver last night, the Mania predictions will also be up on my Twitter and they will be the, pin, the pinned tweet um, basically probably until the next pay-per-view. So, first match prediction we have is the Universal Championship match, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Me and Jesse have both taken Seth Rollins. Now, last year, we both took Roman Reigns and they swerved us and we didn't get what we thought we were going to get. This year we're confident that they're not going to do that again. <sighs> we're scared shitless that they're going to fucking do that again, to be honest. Next, we have the main event, the Women's Championship Triple Threat Match, winner take all. We have the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, the SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair, and the man, Becky Lynch. Come on. You guys know damn well who we're taking. We're both taking Becky Lynch. It's the first. It's the first. Mania with a women. It's the first pay-per-view ever with a women's main with the women in the main event um, The match is what's been built up the most like I'm not trying to say that this is a bad mania build up But this is the match that's been built up the most out of every single match so far And we're both taking Becky because it's the story that they're going for is probably gonna be Becky winning Next we have the cruiserweight championship match the juggernaut Buddy Murphy versus Abs McGee himself, Tony Nese. We've both gone, I believe we've both gone for Buddy Murphy to retain. Yes, we've both gone for Buddy Murphy to retain his title. I don't think they're going to get rid of his long title reign. Although, they could. They really could. Tony Nese is fantastic. Um, I know a lot of his gimmick is pointing his abs and counting. Uh, but he is actually a very, very talented wrestler. He's very good in the ring. He's very good on the mic. And I think Tony Nese could definitely... Be a future cruiserweight champion, maybe not right now, unless they're planning on putting Buddy Murphy up to a bigger sort of like you know they're pushing him to a bigger title. I don't see them taking off Murphy right now. Next we have the men's no holds barred match: Batista versus Triple H. If Batista is to win, Triple H retires. No matter what this has, this is Batista's last match. That is confirmed at this point that this is going to be Batista's last match. Last match in quotation marks because everyone's had their last match. Uh, Shawn Michaels had his last match against The Undertaker, and then okay, let's just not let's just not talk about the Saudi event, okay? But Ric Flair has last match, and they went wrestle in TNA for a few years. So uh, we both predicted Batista. Um, I don't think this is a permanent retirement for Triple H. I don't think this is a permanent retirement for Batista either. Um, I think both of them could potentially come back for more matches in the future. Hell, they could even have another program in the near future with each other to be honest um but we all think Batista is gonna win probably let Triple H do some corporate stuff especially with the XFL starting back up apparently with the XFL starting back up Triple H is going to be taking on a bigger role with the actual WWE hopefully meaning that he's gonna have more creative control over the main roster which if that's the case I think we can start seeing better storylines on the main roster than what Vince is giving us next we have a men's singles match. Uh, this is the farewell match for Kurt Angle against against Baron Corbin. Um, this one, no matter what, this is no doubt about it. Kurt's final match. I, I think everyone can kind of realize that, and it's very, it's very sad to see that because me and Jesse, we've grown up watching Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is one of the guys we watched. Literally, we've seen every match, like almost every match of his career. Um, 
we got into wrestling when he started and it's it's been a, a long you know like 19 ish years something like that it's been a long time uh almost nine yeah probably about almost 17 ish years maybe somewhere around there um but yeah kurt angle has done so much in this business and i honestly we both predicted angle obviously because it's it's kurt angle we don't see him going out on a on a low note we see him kind of riding high one last time um neither of us would want his want his final match against baron corbin for obvious reasons um but you know either way i just hope that he wins this match he deserves to win it kurt angle's given so much to this business and uh he's fantastic and it sucks and and you guys can hear me getting a little bit emotional because like watching someone who i've grown up watching literally grown up watching um it's just hard to see him finding finally end his career um because you know i mean i understand why I think we've all kind of realized over the last year that, you know, there's not much more Kurt Angle can give to this business. He just wanted to have one more decently long, you know, decent run in the WWE. And I think that he's had that since his comeback. He's had two wrestle. He's this is going to be his second WrestleMania match since he came back to the company, which is just like, you know, there's not much more he can do about this. You know, there's not much more he can do for this business. Um, backstage role, I definitely could see him doing maybe another sort of GM style role if they want to bring GMs back, but I just, I can't see him continue, continuing to wrestle with how he is. Um, but yeah, Kurt Angle. Next, we have the Men's Falls County where match The Miz versus Shayna Mack. This is actually a pretty difficult one to, to predict because it could honestly go either way. We both agreed it could honestly go either way. A lot of these matches could really go either way and it's kind of difficult to predict. Um, but we've both gone for The Miz. Um, we've noticed a pattern. So, Shane's basically been here since like WrestleMania 30. Consistently, he's been here. Same with Triple H. Same with AJ Styles. Let, or not WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 31, I believe. Basically, the first WrestleMania match that Kurt, or that AJ Styles did against Chris Jericho, Shane McMahon had the match against... Was it 32? It might have been 32. Shane McMahon had the match against The Undertaker. They've both been on the show since then. I'm not kidding. They've both literally been on the show. They've been on Mania every year. From that point, from AJ's first match and Shane's match against The Undertaker onward, they've both been at Mania. Triple H has been further. I think Triple H is 29, 28, something like that, going forward and, and up. He's been at every Mania. Um, but we've noticed something. Except for the match with Daniel Bryan for, his, for Daniel Bryan's return, Shane's lost every match he's had at Mania in that stretch. He lost to The Undertaker. He lost to AJ. He lost to, uh, the fuck did he face the year before AJ? The fuck else did he face? Who the fuck else did he face at Mania? I can't remember who, who else he faced. But basically, except for the Daniel Bryan tag match, he's lost every match. He's done at Mania. And we don't think this one's going to be any different. Shane is very much, and for, for people who give Shane a lot of shit, yeah, He's not the best in the world. He's nowhere near the best in the world. But he's a fantastic performer. He, in no right, has to do what he does. And he still does it for our enjoyment. And Shane has given so much to his business. And honestly, it's really cool to see him kind of getting these programs and getting kind of big big matches at Mania. Because honestly, Shane's fantastic. Um, and honestly, I kind of I kind of can't wait to see Miz win. Uh, if Miz wins, then Miz wins. If Shane wins, then that's kind of cool too. I, I I don't understand why Shane win. See, obviously, Miz has more of a reason to win, but you know, it, anyway, it could happen. Next, we have a men's singles match: Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. Um, we have pr both predicted AJ Styles. Uh, again, me and Jesse have a lot of similar booking tastes. Um, and wrestling tastes, so a lot of our thoughts kind of go go together the same way uh but yeah it's not that we don't think randy deserves one we, we think randy could benefit with the win but we definitely think aj has probably more of the benefit um with the win for this one um i don't see aj losing i just can't see aj losing this like it's kind of a, a rushed feud i i won't deny that but i understand where it's coming from I just don't see randy winning this feud now i do i do know that randy's kind of a uh, i've heard Rumors that Randy's a backstage politic guy. I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's going to let AJ win. He's going to count the lights for AJ. 
It's the only thing I can see happening is AJ winning this match because it's like, if he doesn't, what's the point of Randy winning? You know what I mean? Like, what's what's really the point of Randy winning that match if he wins? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Next, we had the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. We have both gone for Andrade Cien Almas. Not, on, not just Andrade. Andrade Cien Almas. No, we've both gone for Andrade. Um, we had to look at the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal because it's very weird this year with Colin Jost and Michael Che being involved. It's very stupid that they're involved. Let me just clarify that. It's very, very stupid. Apparently, John Oliver is also going to be at Mania for some reason because I guess he said something bad about wrestling. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah. I'm, I'm, the Battle Royal has never been very fun for, for me to watch. I've never enjoyed it, really. Um, but we both agreed that out of everyone who could possibly do something good with uh, a, a victory in the Battle Royal, Andrade has the most potential out of it. Um, at one point, he did have Aleister Black and I had Lars Sullivan, but then kind of stuff popped up saying Lars Sullivan was definitely not going to be at Mania. Um, and Ricochet and Aleister Black obviously are facing for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships now. Uh, so obviously Aleister Black's not going to be in that match. Uh, so Andrade was kind of the selling point for both of us. We're like, okay, we both see Andrade winning, especially since he's dating Charlotte Flair. Um, but we could definitely both see Andrade winning this and getting a big push out of it. Now, obviously, the winners of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal have not always been the best booked. Uh, Cesaro didn't get booked very well, but that was kind of because the streak had just ended and that was kind of, he was stuck in a shitty situation where Paul Heyman was just touting on about the streak with his new Heyman guy. And uh, he got a U.S. title run, which was not too bad. He aligned with Zeb Coulter at one point. I don't know. It was, it was bad. Big Show definitely didn't need it. Baron Corbin kind of fizzled out after his. He did end up winning the U.S. title and the Money in the Bank and did a few good things, but, you know, he's kind of fallen into a, a shitty situation. Uh, Matt Hardy didn't really need it. Mojo Rawley, well, that went fucking nowhere. Jinder Mahal, the runner-up, actually got um, a bigger push than he did. Uh, but then again, Mojo Rawley's terrible, so... Meh? Yeah, we definitely see Andrade getting something, and uh, I think he's probably going to be one of the, I don't want to say the first people, but he's definitely going to be somebody in the near future. Probably probably SummerSlam feuding for the uh, for the WWE Championship. That's the only thing I could see is they have him feud for it at, the cha at SummerSlam. Maybe cash in. Ooh. I, I could see a cash in. I could see a cash in for Andrade. If he, if he wins Money in the Bank, I can see a cash in at a big pay-per-view. Like, I don't think they're going to pull a trigger on, like, SmackDown or at Money in the Bank. I think they'd pull it at a, a, at a big pay-per-view, like one of the big four. Next, we have the WWE Championship match. We have the new Daniel Bryan versus the one, the only, Kofi Mania himself. Kofi fucking Kingston. 11 years in the making. If you guys haven't noticed, me and Je I, I I'm a diehard Kofi fan. I've been a Kofi fan since day one. Um... Jesse and I have both been huge fans of Kofi his entire career, and uh, we can't wait. Honestly, we we're we're so fucking. I'm so excited to see him finally getting something that he deserves. You know, something, what he deserves, and uh, we both predicted Kofi, obviously, because um, at this point, if they don't give it to Kofi, what the fuck was the fucking point of investing us into this storyline so much? Um, but yeah, we're both going Kofi. It's very much the Daniel Bryan feel good moment sort of storyline. Um, we had it at WrestleMania 20 with Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. We had it at WrestleMania 30 with Daniel Bryan winning over Batista and Randy Orton. Um, and hopefully we're going to have it here with Kofi Kingston winning over Daniel Bryan, which is going to be beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm honestly so excited for this match. Next, we have the United States Championship match, which is kind of in question, and it's not entirely sure if it's going to actually happen. Um, we have Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe. I'm not sure if I still want to say Rey Mysterio is my pick because, like, there's rumors his leg is injured. Again, it could be storyline. Um, but, like, if they don't put it... If it's not against Rey Mysterio, if Rey Mysterio does have to be pulled from the match, I can't see them taking off Rey. Like, I really can't. Or taking off Samoa Joe if Rey is injured. But we, me and Jesse have both gone for Rey Mysterio. I'm not going to change my pick now. Um, because if I did, it'd kind of be unfair to Jesse because I wouldn't be able to, you know, say, hey, do you want to change your pick to Samoa Joe just in case Bray is injured? Um, but, yeah. Uh, I will say this. 
if Rey Mysterio, for any reason, does not is not able to compete, and I'll put this on the tw- on the uh, Twitter predictions thing too. If for any reason Rey Mysterio is not able to compete at WrestleMania, me and Jesse's picks will both change to Samoa Joe because honestly we can't see it. Not, I'm guessing he probably can't see it changing if Rey Mysterio is not in the match. Um, so if Rey Mysterio is not cleared to compete, if it's not storyline injury and he for some reason does not is not able to uh, compete on Mania, me and Jesse are both going to change. I'm going to change my pick to Samoa Joe and I'm going to change Jesse's pick retroactively also to Samoa Joe. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Because obviously, if the match isn't the same as it is on the card, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I think we've both also agreed that if something does happen and Baron Corbin ends up getting attacked or jumped by anybody, even if it's John Cena, we have both still decided to stick with Kurt Angle no matter what, whoever he faces, if Baron Corbin ends up not being who he faces, and it's a giant swerve. Um, but yeah. Next, we have the Intercontinental Championship match Bobby Lashley versus the Demon King Finn Balor. Um, we've both gone for Finn Balor, it's the Demon, he's not losing. Um, he is yet to lose on the main roster as the Demon, um, at least if I'm correct in saying that, I'm pretty sure he's still yet to lose as the Demon. Um, and they're not going to give that, they're not going to give that to Bobby Lashley. Come on, you fucking know damn well they're not going to give that to Bobby Lashley. Uh, I don't think the Bobby Lashley experiments worked as well as they've wanted it to, and, uh, even with Leo Rush as his mouthpiece, it's still not working very well. And I just... I can't see that. I can't see him being the person to beat the demon. Um, so yeah, I, I hope I hope there's something big with the demon. Honestly, I hope he brings out some brand spanking new like fucking move set or something. The demon. The reason I I like the demon, but like it's got to be different from the man. You know, it's got to be different from Finn Balor the man um, in some way, and like edit the move set or something at, at the very least to make it a little bit better. Next, we have a men's singles match: Drew McIntyre versus. Roman Reigns, um, it's Reigns at Mania. We're both going with Reigns. Um, I don't see them having him lose this match. It's not that Drew doesn't deserve the win. It's just I feel like the whole thing with Roman's comeback after leukemia is trying to kind of push him back up and you know get him that kind of underdog sympathy kind of momentum, which does make it sound like they worked it, but it's not. Trust me, guys. It, it was real. That was definitely. I don't think that was that was fake at all. It was definitely real. Um. But I think that they're not going to have him lose this, especially if this really is Dean's last mania. Um, I think they're going to have a huge feel-good moment at the end of the, the Universal Championship match where Seth, Dean, and Roman are all going to be in the middle of the ring and they're probably going to hug or something because it's one last time. You know, that's that's it. That's it for the Shield. Um, again, I'm not super confident that Dean's actually leaving. I think he's going to re- renegotiate. Um, but I think they're going to have a big feel-good moment with the Shield. Maybe a triple power bomb to Brock. The Shield's going to help Seth win in some way. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that Roman's winning this. And I think this is very much going to be a feel-good mania, I think. And it, it, even if even if some things don't go the way people want them to, I think this is going to all in all be looked at as a very good mania at the end of it. Um, so yeah. Next, we have the Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4 match. We have the Boss and Hug Connection, the reigning champions. Uh, we have the Iconics. We have the Divas of Doom, Natalia and Beth Phoenix, and the Samoan Slaughterhouse, Nia Jax and Tamina, otherwise known as the Bocce Butchery, uh, if you were Ross Twiddell. Uh, and we've both gone... We have both gone for the Iconics um, because, personally, I'll put it this way. For fuck's sake. The only reason I can see them doing a Fatal 4 match for this is because they don't want Boston Hug to be pinned. Uh, and no offense to Natalia and Beth Phoenix, who are both pretty good in the ring. Uh, I, was, eh, I was never really the biggest fan of Beth Phoenix. Um, definitely all the offense to Nia Jax and Tamina, they're terrible. Uh, I think they're gonna have the Iconics win by cheating by pinning somebody else. They've pinned the champions, you know. They've pinned Sasha and Bailey. I think in some way they're going to get the victory. It's probably not gonna be on Sasha and Bailey. It could be on Sasha and Bailey, but it might not be on Sasha and Bailey um, to kind of have a, 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 another sort of feud set up for them. Um, honestly, I would have loved had Dakota Kai and uh, her her tag team partner, whose name I can't, whose name I'm fucking spacing on right now, uh, Tegan Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox, I think that's her tag team partner. Uh, had they both been cleared to compete, because I think they're both injured right now, um, had they both been cleared and not injured, I think it would have been cool to have them in there instead of Naya and Tamina. Um, hell, even 
Beth and Natalia. Uh, there's a lot of teams that probably could have come up from NXT to do this, but for some reason they just didn't do it. Uh, and it very, it's very upsetting. So yeah, the Iconics. Next, we have the Women's Battle Royal match. We've both taken Asuka. She should be defending her SmackDown Live Women's Championship, but, you know, whatever. Blah, push Charlotte. Fucking shove her down her throats. Next, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way match. The Usos versus Ricochet and Aleister Black versus The Bar versus Nakamura and Rusev. The first one we've actually disagreed on for me and Jesse. I've gone for Rik or this, uh, I've gone for Ricochet and Aleister Black, and he's gone for The Usos to retain. I can't see them... I can't see them not winning this. I, I, I see them putting it on Rick Shane and Aleister Black at this point because it, it seems like what they're going to do. They've been pushed a lot for title matches. Uh, NXT TakeOver, Raw, SmackDown, Royal Rumble, all that sort of stuff. But they haven't won. I think this time they're probably going to win it. And it'd be a nice feel-good moment. But it'd be kind of cool, too. And finally, the Raw Tag Team Championship match. We have The Revival versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Me and Jesse have both gone for Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. That's right. The streak is going to be broken they are going to have a WrestleMania moment. Zach just got engaged, too, if you guys haven't heard. He got engaged to Chelsea Green recently. I think this is going to be a big feel-good moment for Zach and Kurt. And Kurt's finally going to break his, his, uh, un, uh, his losing streak. And Zach Ryder and him are going to have a feel-good moment. And they're going to be two-time WWE Tag Team Champions. Let me know what your guys' predictions are down in the comments below. If you don't know everyone for the Andre and the Women's Battle Royal, you can go look them up on Wikipedia. They have the full list. I will see you all in the next video. Stay home! Peace.